What's up guys, it's Jay here from TV Time with Jay and welcome back to another episode of TV Time with Jay and this time we are here to review Winona Earp Season 4 Episode 6 the mid-season finale of Winona Earp Season 4 aka Holy War Part 2 Holy War, man this episode should have been titled Holy Shit because Holy shit is what I was yelling all throughout this episode. Oh my goodness. This was just absolutely insane. So, as per usual with my episode reviews, I will be recapping the events of the episode and then going over my thoughts and feels about the different plot points all throughout. I may miss some plot points, you know, a lot of stuff happened. And if there's anything I missed that you want me to talk about, uh, definitely mention it in the comments down below. Uh, because there are a lot of things that I have a lot of feels over, and I probably won't be able to fit them all into one video. So uh, we can talk about it in the comments. So, let's begin, shall we? So, the first thing we're going to talk about is, of course, Nicole dealing with the frog curse and, uh, you know, Agent Chetri. Um, I'm not going to call him Jeremy because it just feels weird for me because my name is Jeremy and I don't, uh, it's weird because it's like referring to myself in third person whenever I talk about his character, so I'm going to just call him Agent Chetri. So Agent Chetri and Nicole are devising a way to kind of break the curse by killing her temporarily so that she will be able to, like, die and possibly trick the spell, right? However... Uh, Mama Clayton or Mama Clanton is, uh, you know, onto their scheme, and so she ends up binding uh, Nicole's soul to a Reaper, and not just any Reaper, to Billy. And so, because of that, you know, well, uh, uh, what you call it? Nicole's soul is no longer in the frog, right? It's actually hijacked and put into Billy. And so, you know, there's this whole, like, adorable little shenanigans where, like, you know, Nicole's body wakes up, you know, with the frog's consciousness in there. And so she, they're like, oh, crap, that means she's in one of the frogs. And so they, you know, collect all the frogs. And, you know, of course, Waverly's first instinct is to go full fairy tale and try to, you know, kiss them to bring Nicole back. Of course, none of that works. Because she is not in, uh, like, the frog. However, her spirit manages to communicate in Morse code that she's not in the frog. And so they discover where she is. Also, I love that, um, you know, Waverly's just like, Oh, damn it, there is never a pottery wheel around whenever you need one. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yo, like... I know I made jokes about the uh, first three episodes and how like they overdid it on humor, but let me tell you, uh, I have my problems with the first three episodes, and I still stand by those. I still think they were just still trying to find their footing, which is totally fine, especially with the big gap between season three and season four. But these last three episodes have been just top-notch A-plus episodes, and this one is just the best yet. So, Waverly... Of course, fueled by, you know, the need to save the woman she loves, she confronts Mama Clanton, and she sees the uh, the Billy Reaper or whatever. And so, Nicole, fighting back, she takes control and basically kind of, like, speaks through the Reaper and is like, you know, tell them. Tell them uh, what I did and why I did it. And, and it's just like, uh, we finally figure out what... Nicole did or what Nicole promised in order to get them back you know from the garden she agreed um, if uh, Mama Clanton helped her get Winona Waverly and Doc out of the garden uh, safely she would help hand over Doc Holiday because Doc was the main person who killed all the Clantons in the shootout at the OK Corral. So, of course, you know, uh, Mama Clanton's whole thing is about vengeance. And this whole uh, season so far has been about the cycle of violence and the cycle of vengeance between these shooting families. So that's really interesting. 
and you know obviously there's like a message of forgiveness and you know wanting to bury grudges and we see a lot of Doc's character development especially in these last three episodes where he's reflecting on his life and the mistakes he's made and how he wants to this time around be better as a person and he doesn't want to just end things with violence he wants to grow and mature and actually just find a peaceful way to do things you know a more diplomatic solution um he even connects with claiborne right and he's like all right we can do this without any bloodshed we can settle this peacefully i will turn myself in and i'll do whatever it takes we can bury this grudge end this feud without any more bloodshed we don't need any more blood on anyone's hands and you know what Claiborne agrees so they decide to do it and uh, you know he's like you know we'll meet up later to you know fully discuss the terms once I talk to my sister and you talk to the herbs and so they leave all right so now let's kind of jump to uh, the Winona portion of the episode so of course uh, before this like with Doc and Winona they are trying to get Rosita to you know, basically come with them back to the convent where Peacemaker is at. And so eventually they do you know, like convince her to get off this rock, which you know we find out actually has been like a barrier protecting Revenant, which is how you know she wasn't killed and how she's been able to stay alive. Um, and so they get her off of there. They send her to the convent, and essentially, you know, base they like do this whole warrior showdown thing where basically all these nuns like start pull out their spears. They surround them in a formation, and they have to fight to the death. And so, it's a awesome cat fight between Rosita and Winota, trading insults and blows. And we find out something pretty huge about this convent. It's not just run by any old Mother Superior. The Mother Superior, the nun in charge, is actually none other than the original woman scorned, or one of the original women scorned, from ancient Greek mythology, Medea. Or Medea, depends on how you pronounce it. I don't really know how to pronounce it. But Medea. Holy shit. I'm a huge fan of Greek mythology. So, well, once they revealed that name, I was like, oh, the whole women scorned thing makes so much sense. And after that, you know, basically Winona gives this whole speech about how she's not perfect, how their enemies aren't going to stop coming, and she needs Peacemaker because she needs to keep fighting. And the reason she does this is because she's a hero. And yes, she is a hero, but... She has to do what she has to do, so sometimes that makes her a killer. And she's not happy about it, but it's what she has to do to survive and to protect her family and the ones she loves. So, you know, if she, Peacemaker doesn't find her worthy, then Peacemaker can suck it. And then we see, of course, like something straight out of a Thor comic. The gun starts to glow. Winona can see it. She stretches out her hand and she's like, come to mama and Peacemaker comes to her hand and of course y'all know the drill by now uh Winona points the gun at Medea and pulls the trigger freeing the nuns from her curse and then after this we realize because Rosita is able to recognize every single one of these women these women are actually female victims of White Earp who were kind of caught in the crossfire of his many you know shootouts and you know his pursuit of you know other outlaws and such um and so rosita can really relate and so you know when they're looking for a leader of course they first turn to winona and then winona's like nah trust me you don't want me to teach you how to be cleansed there's no one more tainted than me but you know what rosita this is a good place for you i think this is somewhere you can belong and you can be safe so you know what no hard feelings and this is when we get the big bombshell. Rosita explains, the reason I stole Alice is because somebody out there was trying to buy your baby. And that person was um, the Clanton chick, Cleo. 
and I was just like, oh man. So she finds this out, and of course, she's just like, oh, I've had enough of this BS. So she comes back, and um, you know, then we cut to Waverly, and you know, just going back to that cycle of violence and vengeance. Of course, you know, Mama Clayton is spouting on and on about like the vengeance that she deserves for her family and her ancestors against the Earps and Doc Holliday, and how she's going to ruin all of their lives, destroy them, you know, piece by piece. And eventually, Waverly snaps. She and then you know, the Mama Clanton talks about, oh, "I have powers you can't possibly comprehend." And Waverly, like her instincts kick in, and she just gets angry. And she's like, "Me too, bitch!" And she grabs her, channels her angel abilities through her hands, through Mama Clanton. And straight up kills her. Like, blood out the eyes and everything. Holy shit. Our poor innocent baby is now a killer. Oh my god, I did not see that coming at all. That blew my mind. And of course, after Claiborne sees this, he's angry. He wants nothing to do with, you know, a peaceful resolution. He wants vengeance now. He thinks, oh, there's, there's no going back from this. I have to do it. I have no choice now. And this is where we see the pinnacle of Doc's character development. You know, he's reflected on all the mistakes he's made with Wyatt and that Wyatt has made himself. But he's also realized, you know, what Winona, Waverly, and the others have taught him. Hope and the belief in change. And the belief in a better way now that we are in the future and that we're in modern times. And so Doc is like, no, 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 we can still settle this, we can be fine, there's no need, we can always bury a grudge, we can settle this, your feud is mainly with me, I'll go with you, we can talk. And so, you know what, Claiborne calms down, he's like, alright, fine, you know what, you're right, let's go, let's do this. And they walk arm in arm, and you know, Claiborne turns his back. And he and Doc are walking away. And that's when we hear a gunshot. And at first I'm thinking, oh shit, it's Cleo. She betrayed her brother. And now she's the Clanton heir. And she's going to try to fuck with the Earps now. Nah, that was not the case. It was Winona herself. Now this is definitely shocking. Like, she put the Y in Winona for sure. Like, what the fuck? Why would you do that? But at the same time, it was definitely foreshadowed with her speech about Peacemaker and, you know, being a hero, but also being a killer uh, because she has to do what she has to do to make sure her family survives and that they'll keep coming after them. So, you know, makes a lot of sense. But I love that Doc was just so disgusted by this and he was visibly shaken. Because Winona was the person that kind of taught him that there was a better path. And the fact that, like, she's lost her way really hurt him. And he even talks about it when they have their, like, you know, heart-to-heart -heart outside. And he goes, you know, no, I didn't want this. I didn't want this for you. I did not want this for me. And I didn't want this for him either. We could have found a better way. There was always going to be a better way. And then, you know, Winona was like, there is no better way. They were going to keep coming after us. We're going to constantly have enemies coming for us. I've killed so many people. Do you really think I give a shit about honor? About shooting, like, you know, playing dirty? Because, you know, Doc calls her out and is like, there was no honor in what you did. You shot a man in the back. And she goes, no. He was going after us. I had to make sure to end it. Because otherwise, you know people get caught in the crossfire and I'm not having that not ever again and, and then you know she tries to you know sweeten him up and it's like you know look I'm not perfect and that's what I've always loved about you uh, John Henry you were never perfect you're just as messed up on the inside as me and you know that's what I love about you and then I love this 
instead of having a Y Doc moment, which to be honest with you, I'm not the biggest Y Doc fan to begin with. Instead of having a Y Doc moment and just letting it slide, Doc being the mature person that he is, reflecting his own growth, walks away from this and says, I don't want to be that way anymore. And he leaves. Um, however, you know, he comes back in after um, Waverly invites them both back inside. And we actually end this half of the season on a really happy, sweet note. Way Hot officially gets to propose to each other. And man, my heart absolutely melted. They are one of my favorite relationships just on TV in general. They're so sweet, innocent. Not even innocent. They're so sweet and pure and everything about their relationship feels authentic it's just natural like nothing is like overly sexualized sure they have sex a lot especially in this season but i mean they've been apart for a year and a half so of course they'd be you know missing each other so you know i've always loved their relationship it's just so positive they bring out the best in each other and uh i'm so happy that we end this half of the season uh, with them, you know, getting to celebrate with the people in their lives that they care the most about. And of course, it ends kind of on a sad note because Doc leaves in the middle of this. And Winona has to watch him go. Um, but again, just really happy for Way Hot. I'm glad we didn't end on some dun dun dun. Get ready for next time on Winona Earp, you know? But regardless, I am excited for the back half of season four 2021 can't get here fast enough i absolutely love this first half you know i had my issues with the first three those episodes were a little rough and they were still trying to find their footing but episodes four through six were absolutely amazing and six was on a whole nother level absolutely phenomenal finale and i, I just can't praise it enough especially doc's character growth uh, Tim Rosan, you know, John Henry Holiday, I tip my uh, I tip my beanie cap to you, sir. Uh, you were the true MVP of this first half of season four. Uh, you really shined. You were amazing. Kudos to you, good sir. Uh, but yeah, those were my thoughts and feels on the se mid season finale of Winona Earp and Winona Earp season four A as a whole. Let me know all your thoughts and feels in the comments down below. As always, don't forget to leave this video a like to let me know you enjoyed it. And if you like what I do here and you want to see more from me, be sure to hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you get notified every time I upload a new video. You best believe I will be uh, reviewing every single episode of the back half of Winona Earp Season 4 as soon as it comes back. So don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you get notified as soon as a new Winona review comes up. But I also review a bunch of other great TV shows as well. So stick around for those too. I would really appreciate it. In the outro card, I will leave links to my review of last week's episode of Winona Earp, Holy War Part 1, as well as a video YouTube mysterious algorithm thinks you might like. But until next time, guys, this is Jay from TV Time with Jay, and I'll catch you guys in Season 4B. Until then, peace, partners.